Good morning, everybody. It is um, July 5th, uh, 2023, and this is Change the Shed. Glad you're here. I am back in my studio. For those of you who attempted to attend last week, I, I do apologize. Um, the last 10 days have been interesting, and uh, one of the things came up that involved a necessary trip quickly, and so I thought, well, I'll just do Change the Shed from somewhere else, and those of you who tried to attend realized that I had um, almost no Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi was probably the slowest I've ever experienced. So um, it was so bad that YouTube didn't even put up the couple minutes that were recorded um, as a recording. So um, it was bad. Um, I thank those of you who tried to come. Um, but hopefully you're seeing me today because we definitely have better Wi-Fi in Fort Collins. So y'all are here from all over. Um, glad you're working on, um, Mary's working on her piece for the Summer of Tapestry, the mapping prompt, which was a fun one for me. Um, they're all fun. Summer of Tapestry has been a blast. Thanks y'all for doing such great things. Um, Michelle is here from um, downstate New York. I like it, downstate. Um, Sybil's here from Basel, uh, Switzerland. Deborah from North Carolina, Renee from Massachusetts, uh, getting her saffron warped for the next summer of tapestry. Have fun with that, Renee. Um, uh, Susan is here from Pittsburgh, and uh, good. Hopefully you're getting a relief from the wildfire smoke. I know we had it for a while, and now it's those of you in the East who have been suffering for quite a while. Well, not to mention people in Canada. Um, um, don't get me started on wildfires, y'all. I've heard a lot of my blather about the fear of wildfires. Um, Julie is here from Germany, and Jeanette from Golden, just down the road, Golden, Colorado. Carol from Bainbridge Island, a uh, beautiful place. Uh, Julie's here from Kirkland, who's, she's working on um, designing her next piece. Um, always a challenge, but hopefully fun. Brenda's here from Pennsylvania, where she's just finished up Summer of Tapestry Prompt 2. Very cool. Um, let's see, Michelle's working on doing some finishing. Nancy's here from Baltimore. Anna from Indianapolis. Marlena's here from Texas, um, which she describes as lovely and warm today. So maybe it's not as hot, Marlena, <laughs> or maybe you just give up at some point. Hopefully it's not as hot as it had been. Um, Janice is here from Wisconsin. Um, lightning. We had lightning last night too, Janice. Um, we had a massive lightning storm. My neighbor's house got hit, I think, and um, it was quite amazing for a while. And I thought, oh, that means all the fireworks won't happen. And nope, it cleared up just in time for terrorizing every dog in the neighborhood. Um, even though fireworks are illegal in Fort Collins, um, they do have a lovely city display. So that one went out for sure. Um, anyway, yay, welcome Fiber Fury, your first change to the shed, woohoo! Extreme Northern Cal uh, California, awesome. Um, I love Northern California and Southern Oregon, so. Um, Christine's here from Ottawa, you probably got some smoke, Christine. Um, Jessica's here from Illinois, and Paula from the UK, and Jennifer from Kentucky, and um, Mary from Maryland, and uh, Janice in Oregon, Carolyn in the UK, <laughs> Susan, yay for good Wi-Fi, no kidding, oh my gosh, I've been so spoiled, so we had, um, yeah, I won't tell you the whole story, but we got fiber as a city utility in Fort Collins about almost two years ago now, and uh, it is just, it means that uploading one of the videos that I make very frequently takes five minutes instead of five hours. So it's been amazing. Um, yay for fiber optic. Um, Nilda's here from Uruguay. Ah, Nilda. So happy you're here. Um, Judy from Vancouver, BC. Um, oh dear. Yeah. Fires on Vancouver Island is not a good thing. Anyway, summer in North America and everywhere else. Um, uh, yes, 
Welcome everybody. And if you haven't been to Change the Shed, welcome especially. This is just where we come and chat about tapestry and I talk way too much and look at your comments and hopefully pretend we're having a back and forth as much as we can with uh, using YouTube, which is just a, a more accessible platform than some others. So that's why I use it. Last week when I was rambling on and none of you could hear me <laughs> because the Wi-Fi was horrible, I was talking about this, which came a week or two ago from the American Tapestry Alliance. Their biennial 14 show is up until I think July 20 in Tennessee. So if you live anywhere nearby, please go see it and please send me pictures because I'm not going to get to see it. And I really love seeing the biennials. If you're interested in tapestry, it makes a really big difference to go and see a show and be able to study the pieces up close. And if you can't go, you can get this catalog from the American Tapestry Alliance. I don't get any kickbacks. I'm just saying this is something I do is collect catalogs, especially if I can't go to a show. But it's a really beautifully done catalog. Um, they always have nice um, designs and um, there's even close-ups in this one, which is really good to see. So you can see sort of how stuff was constructed. Here's Judy's piece. So um, congratulations, Judy. She's in the show with this adorable bird piece. Um, yeah, it's such a sweet piece. There's just some really incredible art um, in this show. So um, if you can't go, it's in Tennessee in a town I can't remember the name of that's halfway between Nashville and Knoxville. So go see it if you can. Otherwise, catalog. Um, I'll be back. Oh, Judy, you haven't gotten your copy yet. Um, that's strange. They should, I don't know what order they do their things. But yeah, hopefully it's coming any day. It looks great. Um, yeah, it looks really great. I'll be back on Change the Shed in two weeks on July 19. Fingers crossed. I hope there won't be any emergency trips anywhere. And I will be right here and we'll be working on something. Um, yeah, just have a fun summer and uh, I'll be doing some dyeing later this summer. I have a bunch of fleece to wash. So those of you in the dye class, um, look forward to at least some um, stuff about over dyeing and I'm gonna work on painting. I'm gonna try some painting stuff um, for a new tapestry I wanna do. So that'll be fun. Uh, yeah, and I was just talking to somebody on Facebook, on their page on Facebook about their, um, they just got into Little Looms. They've not done tapestry before and they're doing weaving tapestry on Little Looms, which is probably the class I've sold the most often. I think it opened in 2016 and um, it's a great little class. So she had just gotten her new saffron, Merrick Saffron Loom and was warping it up. So it's fun to see people excited about a new class and uh, Weaving Tapestry on Little Looms is one that I um, upgraded a, a year or two ago. Um, didn't upgrade, I just gave it a little facelift. So um, it's a really fun class. Today I am working on this little piece. Hang on. Um, <laughs> This piece was supposed to be done by now. Those of you, the astute among you, will realize um, when you see prompt four on Friday for Summer of Tapestry that this is the example piece for prompt number four. Um, it was supposed to be done over a week ago, but I had a little or a large studio disaster about 10 days ago where, uh, yeah, let's just say that if someone is installing a radon detector in your home and your studio is in the basement, ask them four or five times how they're going to contain the cement dust. Otherwise, you're going to spend a week or two cleaning everything of cement dust and also buying new yarn because it doesn't come off. So um, I've been put a little bit behind. That is an excuse, I realize, but this piece may or may not be done by Friday, but the rest of Prompt 4 is ready. So those of you in um, Summer of Tapestry can look forward to. Prompt four. Let's do some weaving. Um, I will show you a little bit more about this prompt. I don't actually know if this picture is important because I think that YouTube does um, a pretty good job with closed captions now, but Jessica will let me know if I need to put the picture back up. Um, this is my little design uh, for this piece, which I think I've said before is about 
oh, here while I'm talking, um, is about American Dippers. So this is a little piece. They're this funny little bird that goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. Um, anyway, this piece is far more complicated than it really should be for Summer of Tapestry. So I just had an idea and I went with it. And um, actually was talking about this recently with some other people online too, about how um, we have this idea in our head about the perfect thing that we want to weave. And that was the case here. Like I knew this tapestry, this is exactly what I want to do. And I had, you know, an idea of what it was all going to be. And uh, <laughs> This is not that, but um, there's a blog post, actually I'll link to it, um, called Crushing the Butterfly that I've mentioned a few times to the design students, which is a quote, it's about a quote from Ann Patchett where she talks about, um, she talks about uh, having this idea for her novel, she's an, uh, a writer, and in her head and it's gorgeous and perfect, and then by the time she goes to write it down, she has to crush it um, to put it on the paper, and that's her, her novel. Um, She's such an incredible writer that it is um, hard to <laughs> sort of equate that to um, perhaps some of our own work. But um, it is interesting to know that everybody struggles with getting the image, whatever's in their head, down into a concrete form. When it comes to making art, I think it's very common um, that it just isn't what we want it to be. And that is the case for this piece for me. And it's okay. Um, yeah, Marlena asked if I um, am getting insurance help. Yeah, I have definitely. The first thing I did was call my insurance company. So, um, fortunately, the dust um, didn't seem. There's a couple of big tapestries hanging. It's this room was only lightly affected. It's in the other room in my studio. Um, there were a couple of tapestries um, hanging there, and they seem like they're okay. I still have to take them down and make completely sure, but. Um, Fortunately, the tapestries I don't think will be damaged. Some of the samples I had were on the top of the table and they're probably goners, but um, they were just um, class samples. So it's not the biggest loss and the yarn can be replaced. It's just that every single tool has to be wiped off and cement dust, if you're familiar with it, is super fine. Think of the 9-11 and how all that dust in the air, that's what my studio looked like. Not that I'm comparing this to 9-11 by any means, but. Um... Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks for clarifying that, Jennifer, or Jessica. I appreciate that. Um, I'll just do this. Maybe that will be out of the way of the tapestry. OK, so this tapestry, I'll stop talking and start working. Um, let's see if I can make sure this is. I'm going to try not to get my head in the way. I know people have complained about that in the past. The, ta the camera is right over my shoulder, like right over the shoulder. So I'm going to try not to lean in, but uh, it's kind of hard to weave from the side. So I'm going to work on this part, I think, to start with. These are a little, this is about water and these birds and, the, and they are aquatic songbirds and they dive into the water. And so I wanted this really swirly thing with the white um, in these lines and then the sort of background and the little um, pick and pick lines to indicate like, um, the bird's little dance, which is really cute. So uh, I've got some white lines to put in here. These are approximations of where I want to change the colors. And I've got, you know, what colors I'm going to use here. Um, so let's work on this part and see what we can make happen here. Um, this is a four salvage warp. And I've mostly been picking the shed, which may be really annoying if the loom is not level. Let's see if I can fix that. This table is not perfect. There, that's better. Um, I want to fill in another little white line here. So the white lines, um, not sticking out quite as much as I'd like. I kind of wish I had used silk. So this is one of those instances where I decided, well, I'm not going to redo it. If I do it again, I'll know. Um, no, maybe to try a shinier fiber there. Or maybe I'll like it. That's the other thing. When you feel discouraged when you're weaving something, you're not sure about it. Um, Sometimes it's a lot better when it's done, and sometimes it's better to just keep going and then learn what you learn from it. 
So that is my goal here is to see what I'll learn from it and then if it's worth doing again, I will. If it's not, it will have been fun. Oh, I think Jessica's asking about the um, radon installers. Yeah, we knew. They came out and pr told us what was going to happen and all of the things, but they never mentioned anything about there might be a problem with dust that they had to drill through the concrete. Um, and there's a door there that they didn't close, so it all could have been avoided. If they had just closed the door, we would have not had this problem. Um, okay. So, I'm always feeling like it's not in focus, but. Okay, so the mixes I'm using, let's see, I need a new piece of yarn here and I'm on mix number two. I actually had so many colors for this piece that I um, did some labeling <laughs> of the cones because I have, you know, I don't know, there's 20 different colors or something. So I put little tapes on the top of the array cones just so that I could keep quicker track of what I was doing and maybe didn't make a mistake. If I do make a mistake, I don't think it matters that much, but oops, hopefully I don't need more of that. I'm just going to splice in a new color. This is just a ray. I believe this is eight ends per inch. I'm using three strands. This yarn is thin enough. You can use four strands at eight EPI. And this is a fringeless four salvage warp. I have a class all about that that I did with Sarah Sweat. And it's tons of fun. So what that means is that when this comes off the loom, this is supplemental warp, top and bottom, the piece will be finished. It will have, um, you know, this will be the edge of the piece. And there won't be any hems or fringe or anything. And I feel like we're having all these humidity changes. I mean, I worked on this last night, but the warps do change a little bit, especially I've noticed with humidity and cotton warp. I think they'll change with any kind of warp, but just slightly, but it's enough that I notice. So a little like quarter turn of the tensioning, which is why one of the reasons I favor looms with tensioning is just that. Uh, ability to adjust the tension all the time. I was fairly devastated when that concrete dust um, thing happened, but I have come around in the last week, most of which I spent away from home, and I feel like accidents happen. I can't imagine it was on purpose. And that's why we have insurance, right? Someone could just give me an extra um, two weeks of time to clean it up, that would be awesome. All right, I don't know if you can see over on this side how this is a little whiter and this is um, not quite as white. I have been mixing a strand of this lime in with some of the little um, curves. So this one had the lime. I think I might do the white by itself in this one and then the next one I'll add the little bit of lime. Um, just added a bunch of lighter colors this year and that lime five is one of them it's really a nice um, 
color to mix with other things. All right, let's see if my shedding is right. Should be. Oh, you know what? I bet, yep. I had tails back here that I could use again for this. Um, there's the debate in my head. Do I use the color I want or do, okay, we'll use the color I want and maybe we'll use those other tails. I made this longer than I need. I'm trying to do this eccentrically, but you're gonna see that it's a little steep for that. See how this is a pretty big float right there? That's really gonna stand out, whether it will stand out enough that I will care is something I need to decide right now. Um, all right, let's see. So, I think it's gonna be good enough that I'm gonna leave it. And let's see. Yeah, won't really know until I fill it in, but um, you can see right there that was a little steep and there's a little bit of a float there, but I think it's probably gonna be okay. This, Michelle, this will be the way that I'm weaving it. She asked if it goes this way or if it's turned sideways. This one goes the way it is. Um, welcome, Hilly from the Netherlands. Stormy there too, huh? It's stormy everywhere. Not everywhere, but we got a lot of storms here in the last few days. All right, let's fill this in and then we'll fill our little curve in and see what happens. Oh, the sheds might even be right. <laughs> I have had, because this is pick and pick, there's a lot of pick and pick here. The um, the shedding on this piece has just been like, I feel for all of you in my um, Fixing the Sheds workshop. Like I should have I should have videotaped some of this, uh, weaving some, maybe when I do the pick and pick up here, I'll do that. Um, just to see how fussy it is to fix shedding problems when you're using pick and pick. Um, along with color changes especially. Pick and pick that is not, that is shaped, uh, can be a tricky little wicket. Let's see. All right. See, of course I need those colors, excuse me. The ones. The colors that I dropped on the floor. <laughs> Someone will ask me about the cone holder. There are references on my website under FAQ of where this came from and most of the other tools I use. None of which I get kickbacks on. They're not affiliate links. The only thing I get any thing back from is the Rebecca package on the Mirac site. If you wanna buy a Lumen, you wanna know what I like, they have a package um, for that. And that is, uh, I occasionally get a free loom out of that. So that's really nice for teaching. And I really appreciate Merrix doing that. But other than that, I don't uh, get any financial remuneration. Is that the right word? Um, okay, I'm gonna use a shed stick for this twice because I feel like I'm gonna screw it up. Ooh, I made this warp really tight. <laughs> you can hear it. Lime, Sybil says lime is such an addictive color. I know, like it's not a color, 
I normally pick, but this light version of the lime is just, um, it's so versatile. I feel like, you know, it just made the white a little bit greener. Anyway, I like it. I think it's a great addition to their color palette. Along with, oh, that's a different piece I'm working on, but um, that pair, they have a new color called Periwinkle, which is a violet, a light purple color. And the lightest one of those does the same thing in the violet range. So I've been using that Periwinkle actually in sky colors for the um, Tapestry Discovery Box. Which, I should say that, that is what I forgot to say. The Tapestry Discovery Box opens, um, you can register for box number three if you're not already in it, and it opens um, July 15. So the class will be ready then, and the uh, box will ship. I think that's a Saturday, so I don't think it actually ships until the 17th, but I could be wrong. Um, so I put a little extra wrap right there just to try to make sure this is a tiny little bit of a curve. And then I'm trying to figure out where, okay, what all the dots mean. All right. I've got another little white curve coming in there, so that's what that is. What's that other dot? Okay. Let's fill this part in using this butterfly. <laughs> Deb, that's funny. Deb said, um, the Merrick's people are lovely, which is true. I wish they'd quit putting a, a loom a month on sale. My loom inventory is increasing at an alarming rate. I hear you there. This is uh, my problem. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's an advantage. I blame it on teaching. I'm like, well, I need looms for teaching. So, but my Merex inventory is. Let's just say I think it's larger than even a teacher really probably needs. Let's just try this. It's my favorite thing is just to, oh, I think that might work out okay. Just to use eccentric. Although now I'm betting my shedding is gonna be wrong. Yep. So see that? These two, oh, nope. Hold on. Nope, it is wrong. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry. It is correct. These are, these two butterflies are, I believe, Let's see, in meet and separate. Yep, they're going apart in the same shed. Whew. Could I eat? Uh, it could easily have been the opposite. Um, oh, Marla, I'm so sorry. We were talking about lightning and um, a friend of her daughter got struck by lightning. This is so scary. Um, yeah, we were gonna grill yesterday and that lightning storm, just on the back deck, but that li the lightning, I think it hit our neighbor's house. I was like, nope, not going outside. <laughs> it's really, lightning in the West can be super scary. Oh, well, anywhere it can be scary, but I'm so sorry. Um, I do, uh, Margo asked, do I ever attach the cartoon behind the weaving? And if so, how? Um, yes. I actually mostly don't. I mostly draw my cartoon on. No, it's just my habit from my floor loom with the horizontal warp, but you can. Um, so if you were gonna attach this cartoon, you would put it here and then stitch with a basting thread. You can just stitch it through. And actually, this is such a finicky piece. It probably would, this would be a good piece for me to do that with. So it's a great question, Margo. Um, you would just stitch, let's see, where am I? About right there. Um, stitch right through the um, fabric that you've already woven 
to attach it with some big basting stitches and then you just pull it out. If it's a big piece, you continue to stitch it as you go up and you'll free the bottom layer. If it's a piece that's gonna wrap around the warp, you don't want the cartoon wrapping around the warp. So yeah, that's a great question. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> um, speaking of looms, Marla says she just, or Michelle said she just um, came up with a design for which she will need a longer loom. I always say, you know I'm gonna say this, don't you? Um, you can always make a copper pipe loom. You can make those pretty big. Okay, I wanna go with, so I'm looking at the colors here. This one has the lime and this one doesn't. I think I'm gonna go back to the one with the lime and I actually have some little tails on the back. I can tell you that the back of this piece is a complete mess and so I am just floating. I'll actually make it less of a mess if I don't start a new bunch of tails there. I'm using two, two wefts here, um, mostly just because it keeps my, it means I don't end up with a shedding problem. Although this is such a small area, if I did have a shedding problem there, I would just put in a piece of crapaud, or a little extra piece of weft to shift the shed and it all would be fine. Probably wouldn't do the two weft thing like that if this was any smaller, if this area was any smaller, it would be two. It would be too small for two butterflies. I'm wondering about making this thicker. I just want things to be delicate, but I also want it to actually show. That's the kind of thing you don't really know until you weave more on top of it. I also want these colors to blend a little bit. So I'm twisting the bundle. Let's see how that looks. Maybe. <laughs> Elaine, that's making me laugh. <laughs> Elaine um, <laughs> said to Michelle about the longer loom, um, as she said that earlier, that she needed a longer loom, and she ended up with a, a Leclerc Go Blonde. Um, that's the big upright floor loom that I have, the Leclerc Go Blonde. It's a huge, um, huge upright floor loom, and it has beams. So, Elaine, you can make whatever length tapestry you want. <laughs> See, you solved the problem. I feel like it's just good sol problem solving, right? Okay, so if you can't see what I'm doing, I'm picking the shed. So um, here, let me move this picture. Um, I'm picking the shed like this. So I have at the top of the loom a, um, let's see if I can move this camera just really quick. The top of the loom, there's a bar. And so this is an open shed. I can get my fingers in easily. And then the other shed I have to pick. So, see if this will focus again now. Here, I can even go a little closer. Okay. So the, the shed I'm picking is the one in the back that is behind the bar. You can do this on even small looms. I don't have the shedding, so this is a Mirex loom. I don't have the shedding device installed because it's a little bit, it does work with the shedding device on a fringeless warp. Um, but there is some tendency for the shedding device to pull the warps a little bit as you start weaving. So if you use the shedding device on a fringeless warp, just weave the first half inch without it and then I think you're fine. I don't use the electric treadle on the shedding on a fringeless warp anymore because it moves so quickly that it will make the warp shift even if you've woven some stuff. So that was a disappointment when I realized that, but um, it just goes too fast. 
Okay, okay, that's gonna look all right, right? Not bad, that is just not really focusing. I feel like I have issues with, here, I'm gonna back it out just a little bit. It might just be a little too close. Okay. Um. <laughs> Michelle says her loom expenditures are limited because her cats will destroy things. So it's a good excuse, Michelle, honestly. All right, we are right in here, and I'm trying to figure out what these little marks are. Okay, this is another curve, and then I've got another little background color coming in. So instead of sort of making the background um, like a gradation or something, I want it to, to change, but I um, wanted it. I just decided to do solid colors within forms, but then I drew forms that were really hard to weave. So, <laughs> way to go, Rebecca. Uh, fortunately, it's all right if they're a little bit wonky. All right, now we're gonna reach um, part of the pick and pick shedding issue is gonna be, gonna have a little problem right here because I want this to go over that and that is a, Um, it's in the wrong shed and I will have a bit of lice there. I'm looking on the back to see if I have um, any tails that I can use. I don't see any really great ones. Um, just use a couple sharp pieces of yarn. Sorry, I know you can't really see my yarn supply here. Just gonna make this a little longer in case I need it again. <laughs> the back of this piece, the finishing on this piece is gonna be something special. Um, I think what I need is to do this. And then, yeah, that fixed my shedding problem. I am gonna pigtail this. So that tiny piece of yarn doesn't pull out. Got a little bit of a loop in that last pick and pick thing. So I might be able to fix that with a needle. When it's off the loom, I'm not gonna unweave it. All right, I'm filling in this little shape. Hang on. I've also lost track of time. Okay, 11.08. Let's go over, all the way over to here. I don't usually use my fingernail to beat things in, but sometimes when things are a little complicated, it's fastest. Bring this over. Just making some little shapes on the edge of this color. And then I want to fill in a little more here. All right. Let me show you a trick that um, Sarah Sweat teaches in her Tacking the Tails PDF. Sarah, if you don't know her, of course, if you've been watching Change the Shed, you know who Sarah Sweat is, but um, she is a friend and teacher and colleague and mentor to me. And she has this, uh, she also does a comic diary and she draws a lot in her newsletter called The Gusset is Fantastic. Um, highly recommend following it. Anyway, she has these PDF downloads that are um, instructional things and they're not expensive. And one of them is called Tucking the Tails. And here's one of her tricks. You'll see the one tail here. Um, because of this one warp wrap here, I want to secure this tail. And I don't, I could on this loom flip the loom around and put this on the back. 
but it's going to disappear on the front. So I'm just going to show you one of the things she shows in Tucking the Tails is this. This is not cheating. I don't do it very often, but I have done it on this piece and a few other small pieces lately. And I have to say it's really nice when uh, you have something that's super loose, like a one warp wrap. So that is gonna just make sure that that little wrap stays where I want it to stay and I can keep weaving around it. And then I could cut this off right now or I will cut it off later just in case. I need to modify it, I would leave it. All right, so I need to get this next curve in. There's another white line that goes in right here. Is that right? Yep. And I want a different background color. And so we're going, we're up here, and we're gonna go with number three, um, which is, let me find it. Two olives. Oh, this is what I was using. Where was I using it? Over here on this side. It's this darker color. Same thing. So two olives and this is actually indigo four. I love these indigo colors. They are so blue gray. The darkest one looks quite blue, but I think they're so pretty and so, again, talk about versatile colors. Um, the indigos are great to have in your um, stash because they mix really well. You can modify the um, weft bundle, how the weft bundle looks a lot by using that color. Okay, so here's the question. Let's just look. <laughs> Before I go over, um, let's just look at the shedding. Last thing, we'll just see if my shed for this new color is all in the right. Okay, that's that other color. Um, yeah, this is all one shed. And so if I put just one butterfly in there, one side will be in one shed and one will be in the other, and that's probably fine, especially because I'm gonna put in another shape. Um, if I wasn't gonna put in another shape, I'd put this in in the middle with two butterflies, but I'm gonna put it in with just one because I know that other shape is gonna come in, and then I can use that to shift the shed a little bit. It all depends in tapestry. Okay, I don't actually want this eccentric thing, so let's take that back. All right, this is gonna be interesting. This is fun playing. This is fun. This is fun. Seeing what happens with the colors, super fun. Well, hopefully those of you in Summer of Tapestry, we'll see this by Friday. I don't know, it's a big stretch for me to have it done by Friday, but I will have it done by next week sometime so I can show you the final tapestry. And again, this is uh, more complicated than most of the tapestries. Um, more complicated than the, what I really intend Summer Tapestry to be. So I apologize for that in, the in advance. Um, well, that was fun, at least for me. I hope y'all are doing well and enjoying uh, your summer and doing some weaving. And uh, if you need a tapestry book, that one. Wait, see, I can't get my, this one. Oh, whatever. Behind me on the table. Um, the Art of Tapestry Weaving. Um, yeah, and I will be back in two weeks on July 19, and I will not be working on this then. So I have another loom, another project that I started a very long time ago that needs finishing. It is currently under a layer of um, cement dust. So if it turns out the tapestry is uh, in good enough shape that I won't just throw it away, I might have that one. 
It's a little bit bigger. Another fringeless one, but a little bit bigger. And not related to any class. Can you imagine? Um, okay, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. And I'll see you on July uh, 19. And in the meantime, have fun. Have a great summer. Stay safe. Please don't get hit by lightning. Um, or whatever else you're doing. Just don't fall off rocks and other things. And I'll see you in two weeks. Happy weaving. Bye-bye.